Hey, welcome everyone into the Wells Tech Garage for this week's episode of Wells Tech Connect. We're on episode number 11 already. Now, I'm gonna get right into it today. We have a ton of comments and questions. So, last class we talked about scan tools, live data, PID diagnostics, all that fun stuff, as kind of the foundation of, the, uh, of, our, of our future here, of how we're gonna be doing classes, what we're gonna be talking about. This was just the, the starting point, the tip of the iceberg as we really work into the more complex things. We had to get some sort of baseline, and that's what we we're talking about. Basically, talking about scan tools, um, OE level scan tools, the GoTech, some older scan tools, um, our Snap-on tools, um, the Tech2, you know, all that stuff. We talked about that, and then we talked just briefly on live data and how the scan tool can actually fool us. So we had a ton of comments and questions, so I'm gonna get into it here. Drew asked, is the GoTech able to record data? Well, Drew, no, the GoTech is not able to record current data, but it is able to email you the trouble codes that are stored in the computer, as well as the freeze frame information. So while you may not be able to get current data sent to you, you are able to get the data from when the vehicle failed, the, the freeze frame information. You are able to get that saved and emailed to you, so you have something to look back on. Another question that came up was, does the GoTech offer ABS and SRS or airbag codes? And the answer to that is currently it does not offer ABS and SRS, but who knows what the future holds? That might be something in the works. Um, and remember with GoTech, the updates are always free. So if and when ABS or SRS do become available at some point, it would be a free update in order to get that information. And then uh, Keith came on and Keith offered us a really interesting um, comment here pertaining to our t-shirt giveaway question. If you remember right, Tech2 had asked the question or the comment stated that uh, scan tools always show, scan tools live data always show exactly what the module is reading from the input or the sensor. So Keith thought up and said that Tech B was incorrect because of data such as calculated airflow. And while we offered a bunch of ideas and a bunch of ways that Tech B was wrong, we hadn't thought about this one. That's great, because it's not truly a reading. There's no calculated airflow sensor on an engine. That's the PCM comparing things like mass airflow sensor, MAP sensor, um, coolant temp, intake air temp. It's calculating all of this thing to calculate the airflow of the engine. So you're right, Tech B is incorrect because of data such as calculated airflow. So awesome, Keith, shows you were thinking. So another comment that we had or question was, um, can you change the amount of PIDs on the GoTech screen in order to speed up the refresh rate? If you guys remember, we had it on a tablet that had six PIDs per screen. On a cell phone, it'll have four PIDs per screen. And um, you're unable to change the amount of PIDs per screen, but you are able to change what PIDs you're seeing. So if you wanna see coolant temp and oxygen sensors and one field trim on a cell phone, you can or you could see both oxygen sensors and both field trims on your phone, something like that. You can move them around however you want, but there's no way to reduce the number of PIDs to speed up refresh rate. And really, the refresh rate isn't being um, bottlenecked by the GoTech, it's actually done by the computer. It's average for the computer to, to transmit about four hertz per second or four updates per second. You know, as we move forward into Newer vehicles, you know, we might see computers transmit data faster. We don't know at this point. I'm sure it's coming down the road. Everything is speeding up. So down the road, we might see a faster refresh rate or a more truly live data. But currently, it's average to have about a 4 hertz refresh rate on the live data on a scan tool. So then we had a pretty funny comment here. Actually, Roy had sent me an email, and he said, I couldn't help but notice your reference to light beer. If you guys remember, I was talking about light beer and comparing how, you know, you have your Bud Light guys and your Miller Light guys, like you have your Snap-on scan tool guys or your OTC or your Autel scan tool guys. Same type of deal. I was comparing it to light beer and uh, Roy noticed and he asked, is that how you stay so slim? Well, Roy, I wish that was all it took. Um, you know, I, I have to be careful now. I'm not running around in the shop all day anymore. You know, I have, uh, a training job now I spend more time at a at a desk building classes and stuff and you know that camera adds 15 pounds so <laughs> I got to be careful but you know in all seriousness 
it isn't just light beer. Being from Wisconsin, I have so many beer choices, I can't even, can't even name them all. So for those of you that have uh, been to this area, I'm sure you're familiar with that. But uh, great comment, Roy, I love it. I, you know, I love all the feedback from you guys and these questions. And that brings me into this next comment here. You know, we love hearing from you guys. And not all the comments that we get are gonna be 100% happy and positive and cheery. You know, there's gonna be some eye-opening comments that really um, are the honest truth of what somebody felt about our video, and that's where this comment comes in. And I'm gonna read this comment from, I believe your name is pronounced Mayak, and I'm sorry if I butchered it, um, but he was kind enough to comment in a uh, very um, honest opinion on our video. So I'm gonna read out what he had written. It says, uh, the first 20 minutes is BS talking about scanners and promoting a dongle. The rest of the video is looking at PIDs. Great. Next time, it would be good to see actual good information. Let's say which PIDs to use in case of misfires, field trim issues, or O2 problems. This is truly a waste of time and probably why you have such a low audience. Well, Mayak, I'm sorry that you feel that way and that you feel that this was a waste of time. But as I was just talking about in the beginning of this, this class was designed as just the tip of the iceberg. Remember, we got to have some sort of foundation for us to build on. We have to be able to progress because not everybody who watches our videos is going to be a master tech. This is new to some people and we have to make sure that they can keep up. Um, so as we move forward here and we build upon these building blocks that we've started, we're going to get in depth. We're going to use um, live data to diagnose misfires and field trim issues and O2 problems. We're going to be talking about all that, but we need to start somewhere and that's what this class was. So again, I'm sorry that you felt like this was a, a waste of your time. But uh, just stay tuned, I promise, it's gonna get better for you. You're gonna, you're gonna like what we got coming. So again, I really appreciate the honest comments just as much as I appreciate the funny ones like uh, Roy sent in about the light beer. So awesome stuff, guys, we love it. Um, let's talk about the next class we have coming up. Now our schedule here gets a little, um, it changes a little coming up here. Now October, our broadcast is going to be October 6th. That is going to be the normal schedule. So Eastern, Central, Mountain and Pacific at noon in those time zones, you're gonna be able to see us live. And that's October 6th. We're gonna be talking deeper into scan tool data. We're gonna show you guys graphing on scan tools and how that can be a useful function. And uh, so stay tuned for that. That's October 6th. But now as we move into November, this is where it's gonna to start to change a little bit, guys. So just keep with me here. And that's why I'm bringing this up in advance. November, our class, which would normally be the first week in November, is actually getting bumped back until November 10th. That first week in November, I will actually be at the Apex and SEMA show in Vegas. So if any of you guys are there, stop in the NGK and Wells booth. I'll be there, so stop by and say hi. And also, check out our Facebook videos um, for that week. I plan to do some Facebook Live videos and maybe some contests, some giveaways while we're at uh, SEMA and Apex. So. Our broadcast, which would normally be that Thursday, will not be. It'll be the following Thursday, the 10th. And remember, what, like I talked about during our last broadcast, our times are going to change a little bit for this broadcast starting in November and here on out. We're only going to be broadcasting twice instead of four times. So you're going to have to catch us at either Eastern time at noon or Pacific time at noon. We're going to be cutting out the Central and Mountain time broadcasts. So just so you guys are aware. The schedule coming up October 6th for our next broadcast, Eastern, Central, Mountain, and Pacific at noon in your time zone, and then November 10th at noon in Eastern time and Pacific time. And then that uh, week before November 10th, check out our Wells Vehicle Electronics Facebook page. We're going to be doing some uh, Facebook Live videos and that kind of stuff while we're at SEMA. And again, if you guys are at SEMA or Apex, check out the NGK Wells booth and uh, come by and say hi. So I think that's it for today, guys. I think we'll see you guys on uh, October 6th at noon. So we'll see you then.